Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, forgive our you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from Proverbs 1, verses 20 through 33. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the square, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. How long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you. When panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord would have none of my counsel and despise my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. The word of the Lord. shows his handiwork. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. In the deep, as he sets the lilies of the sun, it comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion who runneth the course. It goes forth from the uppermost edge of the heavens, and runs about the streets of the ends, about the kingdom from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. Forever. The 
judgments from the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More than the Lord, more than the much higher, far from honey, and honey is full. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. By the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from James. <coughs> Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the body, whole body in check with the bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder whenever, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a re restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in his likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter, Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Amen. Good morning and blessings. Today's gospel reading is full of different concepts, themes, and verses. And, but I want to focus this sermon today on the question that Jesus asked his disciples that day. Who do you say that I am? This is a question that we must all answer. Who do you say that Jesus is? Let me provide some context to the gospel reading this morning. This particular set of verses falls dead in the center of Mark, and it is done that way on purpose by the author because this is the pinnacle point of Jesus' ministry. Jesus had been you know, going around healing people and preaching and um, questioning the authorities, the religious authorities, and he's at a point now where he, he knows that pretty soon there's not going to be much more time left. And so he starts to wonder to himself, do these disciples of mine, are they ready? Are they ready to go out and take my the mission that I've given them out to the rest of the people. So has he prepared them? The second piece of context I'd like to bring up is where does this take place? Where does this gospel reading take place? And it takes place in a town called Caesarea Philippi. And it's outside of the state or the country of Galilee, however you phrase it. This was that was where Herod was in charge of that territory. Now he moves into another territory where he's with them, which is run by a person named Philip, hence the name Caesarea Philippi. Okay, so Philip is the, 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 the person there that's in charge. And Caesarea is named after um, 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 Caesar Augustus, who is the Roman emperor at the time, okay? So they're, they're there, and what they did is, is this area 
that they go to is a really ancient area. And the ancient Greeks, um, Greeks actually believed that the god Pan, the god of nature, um, was born there. So it has that history to it. And also, Philip decided that he's going to build a temple to Augustus Caesar um, up on the hilltop. So they're, they're in the shadow of this temple this entire time that Jesus is doing, that, that he's talking to the disciples in his, um, as, he, as he's going through this verse, these verses. So when Jesus asks them, who do the people say that I am? They respond with, well, it's John the Baptist, or some say Elijah, and others say it's the prophets, other prophets. But then Jesus makes it very personal to them. Who do you say that I am? Peter, being the always um, over-exuberant um, disciple, decides to jump up and shout out, the Messiah. You're the Messiah. Well, Messiah is Hebrew for Christ, which is in Greek, for the anointed one, the anointed one of God in English. So he he's, shouts out that he's the Messiah. But Jesus sort of responds a little bit odd. He tells them to be quiet about it. He doesn't want them to know about it. And the reason why is because he knows there's two problems with that. One is he knows he's already making ruckus about this um, Roman authority that's going on there and questioning, and people are starting to wonder, ask questions, and he's questioning the scribes and the, the Pharisees. But it's also because the um, it's also because he is um, knowing that he's underneath of the shadow of that Augustus Caesar temple that's up there, and so this political thing. He's got this little band of people up there, and he's um, he doesn't want Peter going out shouting, "Hey, here's the Messiah! The Messiah is here!" Um, that and they for, they don't really understand what the Messiah is. Because to them, they're thinking of the, um, the Hebrew or the, the, the Jewish tradition of the Messiah of being a big political leader, um, coming up, raising up an army, taking over the, uh, the conquerors of the area, which would be the Romans. So Jesus proceeds to tell them, well, look, the, the Messiah I'm talking about is to undergo great suffering. Um, I'm going to be rejected by the elders, the great priests, and the scribes who are the religious authorities. And I'm going to be killed, and I'm going to be risen after three days. Peter pulls Jesus aside and says, are you crazy? Uh, you know, are, are, you, are you really talking to us about, you know, not being this person? You know, I gave up my job, I gave up my life for, to follow you, and here you are telling us that you're going to be punished and you're going to be ridiculed and you're going to die and leave us. And Jesus responds, get behind me, Satan. Well, for us, we think of Satan as this little red devil person and everything that he's telling, trying to get us to do bad things. But the Satan they're talking about here is from is from the Old Testament Satan, similar to what's in the book of Job. If you read the book of Job, the sa Satan is called the adversary. And so Satan in Hebrew means adversary. So he's talking about that, G that Peter is against him. So that's where that comes from. And then for, because, and he tells him that because Peter is setting his, not as his mind on divine things, but rather on human things. He's worried about gaining power, gaining control, and things like that here on earth, and he's not thinking forward to what Jesus has been teaching them all along. So Jesus then turns his, his discussion around that if you want to be a disciple of his, you have to give up yourself, give up your worldly things, and follow him to follow godly things or divine things. And that whoever loses their life for the gospel in him will live. It will be saved. And then he says the famous line, for what does it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? And the version I like is, 
um, for what does it profit them um, to gain the whole world and lose their soul? So that's the soul and life is synonymous there. So the King James Version was the last one that I said. And the more I prayed about this gospel this week while I was preparing it, I kept coming back to, but who do you say that I am? So, yesterday was the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks on the United States. Like Jesus, like Jesus was in the shadow of that temple of Caesar Augustus, and they, 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 the Romans believed that the emperor was a god. So, with him being in the shadow of this big temple, and everything up on the hill talk Jesus is talking about him being rejected him suffering and death and that they ha and that his disciples need to give up their lives to follow him we too are under the shadow of that very personal question that Jesus asked who do you say that I am even under especially under the shadow of those attacks. Like many of you who were old enough to remember September 11th when it occurred, I know exactly where I was that unforgettable day. But today's gospel took me to a different place. It took me to another day that I remember, which happened on 9-11-2011. That was the 10th anniversary and it was the very first day of my first formal discernment committee meeting for me to move towards ordained ministry. We met at the committee chair's house, and you know it was it was pretty light. Um, you know, it's really nice to be there. It was a happy occasion for us. You know, going through this discernment committee, and we're. We have food and everything there, and then finally we settle into the living room to start the discernment questions. And the first question that they asked me was not an easy icebreaker by any means. Matter of fact, I couldn't believe what I was about to hear. It was a very, very personal question, very personal, direct question. And that question was, today is the 10th anniversary of 9-11. Where was Jesus? After I picked myself up off the floor and I, and I reflected for a minute, I looked up and I said, where he always is, he was right there by everyone. He was by those who were on the plane. He was whispering comforts to them. He was comforting them. He was with those in the towers. He was with the rescuers. He was with those who died. He was with those who were at the Pentagon. He was with all of the people, including the terrorists. He was standing beside the terrorists. He was standing there crying, tears streaming down his cheek, wishing that they would see him for who he was, wishing that they would change their direction and not to think about worldly things, but think about divine things. For me, for how I answer that question, who is Jesus? Or how do I, who do you say Jesus is? Jesus is God. Jesus is love. Jesus is with everyone, no matter who we are or what we've done. Loving everyone for who they are. Praying that we give up ourselves our lives to follow him for the sake of the gospel and to focus our attention on the divine and not worldly things, human things. With that in mind, I ask you, who do you say that Jesus is? Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble especially our family and friends on Trinity's prayer list. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for our families, Mario and Doris Aguilar, William and Jane Anderson, Amy Backus and Frank Bailey, Denise Vesuvio and Anna Bailey. We offer prayers for our military and their families, Anthony, Anna Marie, Vincent, Brian, Jerome, Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, Kevin, Jerry, Danielle, and Luke. We offer prayers for our college students, Kelsey, Ben, Martha, Zach, Virginia, Gabrielle, AJ, Anna, Joshua, Lydia, Ashley, and Joe. Let us now say the prayer for Trinity. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us into your service to invite others to be a part of our community, inspiring them to have a deep and abiding relationship with you and to serve all in your name. Help us to respond to that call wholeheartedly and lead us boldly into the future. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. 
let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk, walk in, in your, your ways, ways to the, the glory, glory of your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Mother Ann came back from her sabbatical a week early so that she could take this week and do baseball some more. Um, she and Colin are baseballing again this week somewhere out of state. I've forgotten now which state she's in, but um, but she's somewhere on the East Coast. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit this morning about um, COVID. Uh, the diocese has a team of physicians from various walks of life who advise them on what the diocese and the congregations need to be doing in relationship to COVID. And uh, this past, uh, about a week and a half ago, as Ann I think mentioned last week, um, the bishop uh, issued a, um, a statement about uh, what the diocese is, is requiring of its clergy and staff and volunteers. Uh, one is that all clergy and staff must be fully vaccinated. Fortunately, here at Trinity, all of our clergy and staff uh, have been fully vaccinated for some time. Um, however, this now applies to volunteers who uh, interface with the public. So, for example, it applies to the choir. It applies to ushers uh, who interface with the public here. It applies to any volunteer who is going to be dealing uh, in, in a public place. So for us, it would be people like uh, those who are delivering backpack blessings to the school. It would apply to uh, folks who are working with the Day Resource Center, providing meals for the Day Resource Center. Um, we're going to ask our scout leaders because we're the charter, we're the chartering sponsor for our scout troop. We're going to be asking that they that they also be vaccinated. Um, we're asking also if you are willing um, to fill out that form that was on the back of your bulletin this morning. Uh, if you're willing to fill out that form, just in case you ever volunteer. Um, in a public facing way that then we wouldn't have to be chasing you down to get the paperwork. We'd already have it in the file and we will keep uh, all of the volunteers uh, paper in, in our own files. Um, the deadline for this is October the 18th, I think. I actually gave my form to someone else, but um, I think if you were that the deadline is to be fully vaccinated by the 18th of October. It's in Ann's letter, I think. Um, at any rate, so if you uh, want to fill that form out, you can do it in three ways. You can fill it out here. You can fill it out online by going to Tidbits and filling that form out online, or um, you can fill it out and mail it back to us. Um, because we will be collecting it and holding it and holding it in the file. Are there any questions about, any questions about that? Okay. Um, 
This morning we will be, obviously since uh, Mother Ann is not here, we will be doing a uh, Holy Eucharist from the Reserve Sacrament. Uh, she has consecrated uh, a number of uh, hosts before she left. We're not using wine anyway, but she consecrated a number of hosts, so we are doing um, Mass from the Reserve Sacrament this morning. Uh, as as you may remember, it's uh, the the um, ritual is just a little shorter uh, because we're not consecrating the elements this morning. Are there other announcements that anyone would like to make? Judy. Are there other announcements? How about birthdays? Anyone have a birthday this coming week? Wedding anniversaries. Yes, we had a wedding anniversary and Denise was here for the eight o'clock service, so I said a prayer for us at the eight o'clock service. <laughs> today, is, today, actually, is our 29th wedding anniversary. All right, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God. of your name.
holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of the children of Abraham to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he suffered, our Lord Jesus Christ instituted the sacrament of his body and blood. Mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. For the people at home, this is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep us in eternal life. to be 
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have, you have graciously, graciously accepted, accepted us, us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he brought her. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs> 